Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Devin Adams. I'm a Ford instructor here in Tempe, Arizona, and I do these videos for the people who take my class. And uh, this is a big one that got requested a lot was the uh, AD VPN, which is the automatic discovery VPN. And then someone mentioned in the comments field, hey, you should do BGP. I'm like, why not? Because you know what? Those NSC7 videos that I covered, I didn't touch this stuff. And it is part of the objective, so I said, so be it. So in our last uh, video, all right, we installed and configured BGP on these two boxes right here because they are acting as our autonomous systems out there on the interwebs, okay? We're just using a PF Sense box. I'll double click on one of these, all right, to simulate that. And I actually like the PF Sense box even more so than the Linux router because it's all self-contained and you can install a lot of neat features on it using just a web GUI. So you don't actually have to consume an entire an entire VM box for that. Um, I think I'm going to start using these going forward. Anyways, but uh, yeah, so we were able to pass um, advertisements between them, all right, because uh, we had a default gateway of it going out, I believe, this direction or this direction. Anyways, <laughs> I didn't know how to get back here until we formed a BGP peer between these two. And let's actually take a look at that just for review. And that way they knew the big picture. So. Here we go. Let's log in to uh, our autonomous system 300, I believe it is. Nope, this is 200. So this is going to be this side. All right. Now, we went ahead here, and if we go to status, and nope, we go to services, and we go to our open BGP, all right, and we go to status, we will see that it formed an adjacency with the other PF Sense box. Okay. And it's sent over two prefixes so what it sent over here was essentially a you know if you need to get here send it to me all right so we went ahead and said hey if it begins with 10.200.00 give it to my bgp neighbor if it's 10.200.00 give it to me that's pretty much what it's what it's saying there guys okay so uh, but now we got to go ahead and take advantage of that and get our uh, 40 gates to pass down now these are single home BGP all right configurations and I believe there's some application to that because usually it's just dual home that you'd have this configured using BGP pairing and if you guys can see it here I even I even realized you know what we better do that on the very last video okay and uh, but we're gonna go ahead and inject some routes in BGP so uh, something over here on on this side of the FortiGate somewhere over here on this side of the FortiGate world uh, we can reach it because we're letting our BGP neighbors know how to get from here to there. All right. So, um, and the whole reason why we're doing BGP guys is because before we can do our AD VPN, we need to have dynamic routing and we're going to do route reflectors for those. All right. So once again, uh, in this demo, cause it's a single home, we're going to announce the default gateway using BGP. And then we are going to announce uh, a certain IP address to the rest of the world and we're going to pretend like that's a public IP address that our autonomous system owns and only they can get to it through through our network. Um, so let's go ahead and do it. So uh, what we are going to do here is set up on the PF Sense box side first. All right. So I am in autonomous system 200. So I am facing down towards the hub two topology. All right. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to groups and I'm going to make my first group. Now in my other videos, I always used um, IT Ninja as my as my make believe organization, and we have a group uh, autonomous system number of sixty five thousand. All right. And then for our neighbors, we're going to say, OK, uh, go ahead and peer with who we're going to say. Hub2, say I'm giving it a name that makes sense to us, and the IP address of that facing WAN peer. Okay, so, and then what group? It's going to be IT Ninja. And here, though, I'm going to leave it, not announce all, because we don't, we don't care about announcing to it other than, hey, if you need to get out, uh, use us as your default gateway. All right. So there you go. Okay.
And believe it or not, that should be it on that side. So let's go over to our autonomous system 300 and do it from this side. All right. So here we go. We're going to log in. All right. And we're just kind of going to do the same thing, but in the other direction. So we're going to go down to our um, uh, services, our open BGPD. All right. And we're going to say a new group. This is going to be IT Ninja, the autonomous system, 65,000. All right. And then for its neighbor, OK, we are going to call it Hub1. And the IP address is going to be 10.100.1.1, .1 .1, OK? Because that is the interface between this guy and our autonomous system here, OK? And then with a group, and we're not giving them everything. We're just giving them uh, default routes. OK, so we're going to go ahead and hit save. All right. And now it's time to do it on the FortiGates. OK, so I'm first going to go over here to Hub1. All right. And let me load up a web browser. OK, log in using my super secret credentials. And these are the free VMs, so you guys can can uh, duplicate this in your own lab environment. OK, so now we're going to go over here, excuse me, to our network. We're going to go to our uh, static routes. All right. And I'm actually going to take out this default gateway because we're going to get it using BGP. All right. So, ah, uh, okay. That's why I had to come inside here too, because the reverse path forwarding check would have broke it. So, but now we're going to go over to BGP. All right. And we have a local AS number of 65,000 and our router ID is going to be 10.100.1.1. And our neighbor is going to be, if you guys see that there, it's going to be 100. So we're going to say 10.100.1.254, because that's the interface of this guy right here. And it is an autonomous number of 300. OK. Now, the FortiGates by default. All right, let's talk about this just, just for a hot second. By default, are going to uh, accept anything that's advertised to them. So if you guys want to filter those out, you have to do a filter in policy through the CLI. All right. Uh, and the FortiGate will not advertise anything out by default. So it takes everything that's received by default, but it won't give out or redistribute anything by default. All right. We're going to do that just a little bit later. But first, let's see if our uh, our peering doesn't, doesn't happen. So uh, one place we can check is we can just come here and wait for their. Oh, pff, look at that. It already worked. All right. So pretty fancy stuff. All right, guys, I went to routing monitor and you saw that we were announced the default gateway because we set it up using um, the PF sense box in BGP. And that's going to be very helpful too when we have dual homes, right? We can just say, hey, you know, if it comes comes in as a default gateway, it's 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 a part of the uh, the WAN group. So, all right, let's go over to hub two now and do the exact same thing. So, all right. But now we're doing it on the other side of the world. OK. And this is all going to lead up to that auto discovery VPN, I promise, guys. So all right. So here we are. We're going to go to our uh, network. We're going to go to our static routes. And we're going to get rid of the static one. And you know we could leave that in until everything's said and done. The reason why I'm taking it out now is just so the BGP shows up automatically. But the BGP. Um, Static route will come in with a default distance of 20, and our static has a default distance of 10. So um, it will actually, you know, never show up in our monitor unless we took that out. So uh, let's go to BGP now, and let's form that. So our local ID is going to be 65,000, okay, and ours is 10.200.1.1, okay. So. And then our neighbor is going to be the autonomous system 2, which lives at 10.200.1.254. 
and it is 200, all right? Now, we have an agreement from them, okay, to get the default route and also for us to advertise an IP address out eventually, all right? Let's first get the default gateway. So how do we check that? We go to monitor, okay? We go to our routing monitor and look at that, BGP. We got the default route, all right? And just to verify this, I'm just gonna go to YouTube or something, yeah, we're we're out on the internet. I can see it transferring data, okay? Good times. All right, so what's the big deal? Well, what if we want to tell the world using BGP that we own an IP address, all right? So just to kind of simulate this, I'm going to go over to my terminal here, and I'm going to try to ping 192.168.1.2 and of course it's that's something on my network so I'm not going to I'm not going to use that IP address 192.168. let's try 200.2 it'd be nice if I put ping in front of it okay this is why I don't rehearse these guys so I look awesome okay here we go I'm waiting for it to fail. All right, there we go. So that's not working. So let's go ahead and pretend like the uh, hub one owns that IP address, right? And we want to advertise it to the world that we own it. Okay, so uh, we go over to our BGP, okay? And we should in real life have an agreement of all of this before it happens. But uh, let's just go into our um, network. Let's go into our interfaces, okay? And I'm just going to take that WAN1 and give it a second IP address of 10.200. Uh, of 192.168.200.2. So here we go. So we'll say 192. All right. 168.200.2. And we'll give it ping access. Ping. OK. And we hit OK. And just to test that it is pingable from the inside here, I'm just going to ping. This is behind hub 1. 192, 168, 200.2. So there it is. All right, that's my second IP address on my WAN port. Um, but if we come to the other side of the world, I mean, it's still not, it's not reachable, guys. The, the firewall doesn't know what to do with it, so it keeps pushing it all the default routes. But now we're going to go ahead and, because we had it negotiated with our internet service provider, say, hey, if this IP address comes to you, route it to me. Oops, come on. Sorry about that, guys. With the slash 32. All right, now how can we test this? The easiest way would be for us to go onto our hub and just take a look at that. We could also do it from the 40 gate though. All right, but like I said, this is just easier. We'll go to open BGP, we'll go to status, and we'll see that a prefix was learned if everything went okay. All right, you see the one prefix? And now it's saying, hey, if you need to get here, this is the path that you go. All right? And uh, yeah, lo and behold, it's still not it's still not advertising yet. All right. So let's hop over to our other gateway. Uh, that way. It's probably the same one. Let's take a look here. Oops, you know what? I'll just do it from this management machine right here because it has access to both of them right away. So, all right, so let's go to status. Okay. All right, so autonomous system 200 gave us one prefix. All right, then let's go over to the 200, hit status. And it should know it. All right. There we go. See how it's telling it all the different ways to get there and even the path? Okay. So this should, in theory, become pingable. And there it is. All right. So I just had to hit up one more time. So it took a second, but remember, BGP is not all about speed, it's all about 
permissions. It's it's saying, okay, hand this to this person, hand this to that person. Okay, it's not a you know, it's not like OSPF where it's all dynamically learned and things like that. So um, that's why it's called policy-based routing. All right. I mean, isn't that cool, guys? Should we do it the other direction? Why not? Let's do it. So we'll come over here to Hub 1. I have too many of these hubs open. I'll load up a terminal. And we'll do a ping. 192.168.200.1. All right. It should fail. Okay. That's because it lives over here on our other side of the autonomous system. So let's go into that guy. Let me close out some of these. All right. I have way too many windows open. All right. And let's go ahead and uh, advertise the route going the other direction. So we're just going to do the same thing, just other other side of the world. So we're going to go to network. We're going to go to our um, interfaces. I'm going to get a second IP address on that WAN port. All right. Bloop. So we're going to say we own the public IP address. <laughs> All right. By the way, you're going to see here I use summation to do the routing in the and the uh, hub and spoke topology. That's why I did not want an IP address that was in the same subnet mask. So, or using the same octets here. So here we go. And I'll just test its pingable from inside. All right, but it's definitely not to the rest of the world until what? Until we go into our BGP and we tell it that we own the IP address by setting the network. So 192.168.200.1 slash 32. We'll hit OK. Uh, it'd be nice if I used a period. All right, there we go. And eventually, if we go back to our management PC here, all right, and we hit the refresh on the status, we'll see that zero turn to a one. We got one prefix from our hub two, and there it is, all right? So now we're telling the rest of the world how to get to 192.168.100 or 200.1, all right? And there's the different paths there, okay? So pretty darn fancy pantsy, huh, guys? So, and in theory now, all right, if we go ahead and do a control C and try it again, look at that. Because of BGP, it makes the interwebs go around. So, guys, there you go. That's just a quick little demo of uh, getting the default route from BGP and also uh, giving a prefix out to the rest of the world so it's reachable. So, like I said, guys, this is really going to lead up to creating that hub and spoke VPN topology, configuring route reflectors here and here for all of our spokes, right? And then passing them along from hub one to hub two. Then we can flip on all the advanced uh, auto discovery VPNs and you'll see that these spokes can essentially talk to each other on the fly directly when needed. Then we're gonna wrap up uh, the video lesson. I just threw this in right now doing a dual home BGP configuration. All right, so we'll tell two autonomous systems what IP addresses we own so we can uh, get there for redundancy. So in case one goes down, uh, the other the other internet service provider can find us. Okay, so all right, guys, I hope someone found that helpful. And uh, it's going to take me a while to record these things. I got my kids back, you know, life goes forward. Uh, I'll try to do one every couple of days, though. And my goal is to have this done before uh, for the weekends out. So all right, until next time.